there's another alleged beheading video. I have yet to actually find the video itself. There is an article. I haven't looked. I honestly haven't looked too hard for it. I pulled up Live Leak because normally that's the place to go. Um, but I haven't really figured out which one is which. Because uh, you never know which one the original is. They could be edited or chopped up, etc. But I do have the statement that is read by Stephen Joel Sutloff. Now, you may recall last week, it seems like it was just a week ago, maybe a week and a half or something like that, but it wasn't long ago that they we were... another head off. ...that we were talking about another guy who they apparently have had... Uh, they've in, have had him in captivity for a couple of years, since 2012, an American photojournalist, kind of an independent uh, guy. What do they call those independent photojournalist characters? I uh, like that. Freelancer? Freelancer, Freelancer? okay. Uh, anyway, the... Um, James Foley was his name, and we talked about the video in detail. We played the audio track from the video on the air, and then somebody called in to say they didn't think this was real. Now, of course, the American government claimed that the footage was legit, but according to a story at The Telegraph in the UK, the video may have been staged, according to someone who is a pro at this, a, an international forensic science company, studied the four-minute, 40-second clip. And they suggest that camera trickery and slick post-production techniques appear to have been used. Forensic analysts told the Times that no blood can be seen, even though the knife is drawn across the neck area at least six times. Now, again, this is the original video. Haven't seen the new video yet to see if, uh, if it's more persuasive. After enhancements, the knife can be seen to be drawn across the upper neck at least six times with no blood evidence to the point the picture fades to black said the anal- uh, the analysis. So It's weird. Yeah, very strange. Sounds allegedly made by Foley do not appear consistent with what may be expected. And during Foley's speech, there appears to be a blip which could indicate the journalist had to repeat a line. One expert commissioned to examine the footage was reported as saying, quote, I think it has been staged. My feeling is that the execution may have happened after the camera was stopped. Right. And, so, uh, I mean, the possibility so he's exists. probably dead. Right. Well, the, the, that's the, we don't know. Um, the possibility exists that uh, this is completely staged. Right. That's just a big hoax and Foley's fine and living on a uh, you know island somewhere with a U.S. government pension because they're doing a false flag. Seems pretty unlikely. I mean, if yeah, that were it seems true. unlikely to me too. I'm not cl- making that claim. I'm just saying they that's show a, possibility. a decapitated body at the end of the video. Right. Well, uh, Hollywood can do a lot of things. I mean, you can true. replicate some things. This was a very well produced video. It was in HD. You know, everybody's got an HD camera though these days. Look, they might have. Uh, all I'm saying is, is if I mean the head on the body mm. looks like Foley's head, right? And it's difficult to to replicate that. But what if you got Foley to play ball in some way? Hey, look, you're gonna live. It may not be great conditions, but you you'll live here in uh, you know mm. the new uh, Islamic Caliphate. I don't know, and I'm, I I think that he's probably dead, but I'm not sure. The I just don't know. Video experts say no one is disputing. This is the conclusion in their report. No one is disputing that at some point an execution occurred. Just that maybe it wasn't what it was appearing to be on the video. Well, there's lots of people that are disputing it. This this report is full of crap when they say nobody's disputing it. Mm. Lots of people are disputing it, and this is why well, I have a problem with the video in the first place. If you're going to release the video of a beheading, release the video of a beheading. Don't put out some kind of weird fake beheading thing attached to a... I mean, you know, maybe they got him to play along by saying, hey, look, we're just going to pretend to behead you. And then they did their first part of the video, and then when he wasn't, you know, after everything was all over, so yeah, it's time to die. You know, and then they kill him. Maybe that's what happened. I don't know, but it's all so strange. Story from DailyMail.co.uk. ISIS has released a video that shows the beheading of U.S. journalist Stephen Sotloff. So this is the new guy. This is the guy who at the very end of the last video, they showed they had this guy Mm -hmm. and the... The masked man here who allegedly did the beheading made some sort of statement about how, you know, Obama, you better do what we want, which is leave us alone or else this guy dies next. And now he has allegedly been killed as well. Uh, The video shows the beheading allegedly. Again, I haven't seen it yet of U.S. journalist Stephen Sotloff and says the murder is retaliation for the Obama administration's continued airstrikes, uh, airstrikes in Iraq. 
Sotloff is the second American journalist to be killed by ISIS, and his death comes two weeks after James Foley was executed in a similar video. Now, the, this is just more proof, by the way, the U.S. government has no obligation to protect you. Sure. I don't think they should be protecting people in this circumstance, but I would point out that <laughs> they could have stopped the bombing over there and— this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, but, but this they guy, don't they're care. not going to do that. They're not going to stop the bombing. They don't care about you and your loved ones. They just care about their mission to uh, you know, increase the military-industrial complex hold over the world. And it's sick. It's hard to argue that. This man might as well... This man was as good as dead last week. I mean, when, when they showed his face on the last video, you knew Obama wasn't going to stop, so you knew this guy was going to go next, and now he's gone. They're going to—they're showing another person at the end of this video. This next, uh, the next victim in line is from the UK, and the uh, Daily Mail is refusing to identify him out of some sort of request from the the UK government. But apparently, there's photos of this person all over the place, and again, uh, haven't yet found the video. If you find it, please feel free to post it to the Free Talk Live page over at freetalklive.com where other listeners could then vote it up or vote it down, because sometimes it can be a challenge to find stuff like this. Not that I really want to look at it, but... You got to. At this I point, mean, at this I point like we have, have to, to after the Foley thing. Yeah. So, in the video entitled, A Second Message to America, Sotloff appears in an orange jumpsuit before he is beheaded by an Islamic State fighter. The executioner appears to be the same man who killed Foley, known as Jihadi John, and tells the camera, I'm back, Obama, and I'm back because of your arrogant foreign policy towards the Islamic State. He also threatens to kill a Briton held hostage by the group next. The identity of the hostage is widely available online, but Mail Online is not identifying him at the request of the British government. The British Prime Minister condemned the video, calling it an absolutely disgusting and despicable act. But it's not disgusting and despicable when the governments of the world bomb innocent people over in Iraq, huh? Well, That's it's not all, disgusting and despicable. That's just war, right? You just got to break a few eggs to make an omelet? That kind it's of all disgusting and despicable, but... I, well, you know, I agree with you, but obviously they think differently. We, we're dealing with, <laughs> we're dealing with uh, the West, you know, you know, the U.S., the U.K. They're responsible for ISIS existing. They are the ones that created the situation, the conditions in which ISIS uh, exists. Let's not forget that. That's right. Uh, right. You know, they fought uh, the same organization in Iraq, funded it in Libya, funded it in um, uh, Syria, and now going to fight against it in Iraq. None of this makes any sense. You know, a year ago, Assad was the most dangerous uh, person out there. Now they're thinking about siding with Assad in order to, uh, in order to go against these people. The, these people are in—the United States government, the U.K. government, the world rulers, they're incompetent. Stop listening to these nut jobs. They will get you killed. They want you for nothing but a soft body to catch their hot bullets. That's what they want you for. You are meaningless to these people. Yes, ISIS is a bunch of nut jobs, but it took a bunch of bloodthirsty nut jobs to be successful against the, the bloodthirsty nut jobs we're dealing with. That's the only thing you can fight them with. So, yes, the most successful beheaders have won at this point. I don't think they can beat the U.S. and the U.K. because, you know, here, here in the United States, we kill people from the air. They're not going to win. Share your thoughts here. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Here's a transcript uh, from the video. Again, I uh, want to find the actual video, but do have trans transcripts provided by the Daily Mail over in the UK. The executioner says the following, quote, I'm back, Obama, and I'm back because of your arrogant foreign policy towards the Islamic State, because of your insistence on continuing your bombings and on Mosul Dam, uh, despite our serious warnings. You, Obama, have but to gain from your actions, but another American citizen... Uh, that doesn't make sense. You have nothing to gain. You have but to gain. to gain one more American citizen. Uh, so just as, you're in, uh, just as your missiles continue to strike our people, our knife will continue to strike the necks of your people. We take this opportunity to warn those governments that enter this evil alliance of America against the Islamic State to back off and leave our people alone. It's not an unreasonable position. Leave us alone and we'll but leave you alone. lopping off heads is unreasonable. Free Talk Live. So, so far I've been reading a story about this new video allegedly showing the beheading of Stephen Sutloff, but yet the video itself is fairly hard to track down at the moment. Normally, liveleak.com is a good site to go to 
when you can't find something on YouTube, there's a good chance that it's been posted on LiveLeak. Sometimes that has to do with uh, you know graphic content, for instance, that LiveLeak is more okay with, it seems, for instance, than YouTube. Yeah. Uh, LiveLeak.com, here's their statement. It seems our last statement caused some confusion among many viewers of LiveLeak. The live stream broadcast on the same night of the statement clarified it, but obviously for not everyone who viewed our initial statement were present. So we've decided another statement is called for in order to set out exactly our criteria and reasoning behind our decision. We understand some of you still won't like this decision, and we respect that. One of the main areas of confusion seems to be what media we are refusing to show. Many people seem to think we will not be showing any graphic media, which is the source, or excuse me, which IS, ISIS, is the source of, and this is not the case. So they are saying they will broadcast some ISIS media, but not this. They, uh, they go on to say, we've never broadcast every graphic video uploaded. We've always been careful not to flood LiveLeak with these items at any rate. And I'll give you our reason for that soon. We will not, excuse me, we will continue to allow posts which display the reality on the ground in the Middle East and those which catalog the brutal atrocities ca uh, carried out by groups such as ISIS. We know there are people who live in that region who regularly post a live leak in order to document such horrors because they want the world to see what they're living through. And we're not abandoning those people. What we won't allow are videos like the James Foley video. There is sometimes a, or there is a difference between showing what is happening and advertising. Sometimes it's yeah, this a is what the problem is is uh, with these amateurs doing these beheadings. What we need is licensed beheadings by licensed beheaders. I don't get what you're saying there. Well, I mean, you know, this is what they're saying is, no. is that uh, we can't have people uh, just uh, you know going and putting their stuff up. I I don't know. I mean, it's either news or it's not. Well, what they're saying here is that this is propaganda basically and that they don't want to promote isis's propaganda sometimes they say it's a fine line sometimes as with this particular video not so fine our stance was not based solely on this video but on the very real possibility that isis will be releasing similar videos in the near future these videos are shot edited and polished in iraq Thanks to a live leak member for informing me about the production company responsible, it made for interesting reading, then distributed to Western media outlets. They're aimed at advertising the ISIS message directly to the West. They are advertising slickly produced pseudo snuff movies, and we want no part in them should they come up. Some people have voiced the opinion that we should allow all or nothing. As I have pointed out, we have never broadcast every graphic video uploaded to LiveLeak. We have a certain responsibility to show as varied a selection of media as we can, whilst not shying away from the darker side of human behavior. It's more important to us to continue this whilst enjoying minimal advertising intrusion and not becoming a porn ad-infested gore site. LiveLeak is not a gore site. It never has been. But those sites do exist, and plenty of them. So you can certainly view what we will not allow, uh, what we will not allow, should you choose. Lastly, regardless of your personal opinion of us, there is something to consider. Between us, we've made, uh, between us, we've been involved in strong online media for over 14 years. This is the first time we've ever made a decision to politically censor material. That should give you an idea as to how strongly we believe in our decision not to be played like a cheap violin. So, you they. Know, I see where they're coming from, but the problem is, is that they took the Foley video, right? They did, and I okay. uh, presume and they now removed it. The since Foley then. video is a bunch of bull crap, from what I can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, experts are saying that it has been that it's altered, that it's uh, you know faked in some way. Yeah. I find it very disturbing. Now, Live Leak decides they're not going to air this other video, and uh, you know, like I want to. I, don't I, as an American citizen, need to know whether or not the journal American journalists are having their heads lopped off in foreign countries? Well, it's not their obligation to provide you with that information. It's not their obligation to do anything, but they are a news source, aren't they? Live leak, sure, yeah. Okay. I mean, like, you know, like, I have an expectation. My expectation is I can go to live leak for news. Well, apparently you can't go to live leak for snuff videos. It, that's what they're calling it. It's an accurate statement, isn't it? I mean, a lot of cases, snuff, snuff videos, videos are fake. usually don't have a political agenda. That's true, but a lot of snuff videos are fake. Yes. And, uh, and that's one of the things they're saying here is they don't want to promote these people's political agenda. So I don't agree with the statement. I mean, I, I wish they so hadn't made it. So which political agendas are okay to promote and which ones aren't? I don't know, Mark.
apparently ones with red, white, and blues with the fighter jets flying over them. Not necessarily. It's people with their hands over their heart and tears dripping out of their eyes. I wouldn't say that about Live Leak at all, Mark. They have been. Do they have videos on there like that? Because they've got millions of videos. Yeah, I don't know what they've got. The answer is yes. All I know is they allow a lot of videos, and this is the first time they've ever decided to not allow a video. Look, I respect their opinion on uh, their their right to do it, but I'm like I'm a little. I'm a little put out that the average person can't find this. Well, somebody will find it, and I'm sure they'll post it over at freetalklive.com uh, when they do. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Here is uh, the statement made by Stephen Sotloff just moments before his alleged death on this video. Quote, I am Stephen Joel Sotloff. I'm sure you know exactly who I am by now and why I'm appearing before you. And now, this is the time for my message. Obama, your foreign policy of intervention in Iraq was supposed to be the preservation of American lives and interests. So why is it that I am paying the price of your interference with my life? We'll come back with more here in moments. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control here. This is Free Talk Live. Uh, I did find the video. I went to ogrish.tv after LiveLeak mentioned the Gore sites. You know, the LiveLeak... Uh, they, they've made a statement saying they're not going to host the ISIS um, you know, beheading videos at this point. And they kind of mentioned gore sites might be the place to look. And I remembered a gore site that I found many years ago, ogrish.tv. Sure enough, they've got the ISIS video right there at the top of the site. We'll play the audio from it here in just a moment. Uh, this is, again, the, the new alleged Murder video, beheading video, and uh, we'll share that with you. All right, so I was going to read to you the text of the video, but since I've actually found the video, we'll just go ahead and play it for you now. This is the uh, the, the latest, uh, the second in a law, what is probably going to be a line of them, uh, uh, videos of uh, alleged murders, so awful. beheadings, in response to the continued bombing campaign against the, the people over in Iraq. Uh, the folks in ISIS are obviously upset about that. And uh, while you're right, Mark, it's certainly uh, wrong to behead people. Uh, I can understand why they're upset. It's a reasonable um, ex- expectation. Like, you can expect this to happen. With the United States foreign policy, this isn't a, uh, this isn't a surprise, really. You can expect these kinds of things to happen with the foreign policy that the U.S. has, and frankly, uh, countries have had for a long time, there's going to be revolts. The most successful groups that are going to revolt are going to be the most violent, the most fanatical mm-hmm. ones. If you don't people let people sort of rule themselves, these are the groups that are going to bubble to the surface. And, by the way, funded and armed to some extent by the U.S. government. So I will link this video on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter for those of you who'd like to see for yourself. But first, I'll play the audio track. Similar to the first video, the mur- alleged murder of James Foley, the American photojournalist, which came out actually it was apparently two weeks ago. Uh, this video also opens with a clip from Barack Obama. The United States of America will continue to do what we must do to protect our people. We will be vigilant and we will be relentless. Except for the people in Iraq, right? The people, the journalists. When people harm Americans anywhere. We do what's necessary to see that justice is done. And we act against ISIL, standing alongside others. And then the title uh, phase of the video comes up, which lets you know that this is called, like the first video, a second message to America. And these folks would like people to pay attention. <laughs> they and then they bring it. Yeah, the, they're, they're being really adamant Stephen about that. Joel Sotloff. The audio track, by the way, is a little bit off here. When uh, Stephen is talking, it's not synced up. It's probably a good second behind, but going on. I'm sure you know exactly who I am by now and why I am appearing before you. And now it is time for my message. Obama, your foreign policy of intervention in Iraq was supposed to be for the preservation of American lives and interests. So why is it that I'm having to pay the price of your interference with my life? Am I not an American citizen? You've spent billions of U.S. taxpayers' dollars, and we've lost thousands of our troops in our previous fighting against the Islamic State. So where's the American people's interests in reigniting this war? From what little I know about foreign policy... I'd like to interrupt there for a moment. 
the American people don't seem to have much of an interest in in reigniting a war in Iraq, uh, from what I understand. Well, I think that what he's referring to, the, the United States didn't really fight the Islamic State in Iraq. They fought the al-Qaeda, which mm-hmm. is an affiliated organization to some extent, in Afghanistan. And there certainly have been thousands, like by that we mean like 2,000 or 3,000 tops, uh, people who have died in Afghanistan. Uh, so I, I guess I'm... I see it that I see what we're talking about there. I think that some some people, some soldiers probably feel like, good Lord, I spent two years over there. I watched my buddies die. I mm-hmm. gave my sanity, my right arm, my blood, my sweat, my tears for this. And they let it all slip away. And that's got to be very painful. Like you make a great sacrifice for something that you're told is important. And then the people who gain that thing act like it's worth nothing because that's not that important to them. Really what for them, what it's about, it's about, uh, you know, oil contracts and what, who can secure what, uh, you know, deal and that kind of thing. This is about American interests, whatever that means. But wouldn't you agree that, I mean, the statement here is accurate that the American people are sick and tired of these Middle Eastern wars. Yeah. But they still continue. Well, the only thing that they can do is continue to drive home the message, if we don't fight them over there, we'll have to fight them over here. These people hate us for our freedoms. They hate Coca-Cola. They hate Lady Gaga. That's they the hate... claim, but there's no real evidence well, for it. Well, there's some evidence for it. There are certainly a percentage of people that believe that. But those people have only been able – they've been radical. those people have been radicalized by the United States foreign policy, and they've been allowed to bubble up to the surface and become successful. Successful because of the United States foreign policy. You'll find that countries that the United States doesn't interfere in, strangely, not trying to kill U.S. citizens. Mm-hmm. And continue with the statement here with uh, the next allegedly beheaded reporter, Stephen Sotloff. I remember a time when you could not win an election without promising to bring our troops back home from Iraq and from Afghanistan and to close down Guantanamo. Here you are now, Obama nearing the end of your term and having achieved none of the above and deceivingly marching us, the American people, into a blazing fire. I'm back, Obama, and I'm back because of your arrogant foreign policy towards the Islamic State, because of your insistence in continuing your bombings in our Middle and the Mosul Dam, despite our serious warnings. You, Obama, have yet again through your actions killed yet another American citizen. So just as your missiles continue to strike our people, our knife will continue to strike the necks of your people. He then proceeds to uh, do more slicing action, and like the past video, it fades to black. And unlike the, uh, the first video, if I recall correctly, the first video ended with a pan of what appeared to be a still photo of the body with a head on top of it. This one is not a still photo. It is an actual pan, video pan, of the alleged body with the head uh, very, very bloody uh, on top. So so once again, they don't show the beheading. They do not show the beheading. The beheading video does, has no beheading. Correct. Uh, so it shows the alleged aftermath and... He sure looks dead, and that is a real, you know, video shot. That's not a still photo. You can see the, you could hear the wind in the video earlier, yeah. and you can see the wind is still blowing in the uh, the still frame, or not the still frame, but the the pan of the body yeah. with the head on top. But also, like the first video of James Foley being allegedly beheaded, uh, this video he does slice a few times across the neck prior to it fading to black. No blood. Uh, no visible blood could, could be seen there. I'm going to post the link up on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter for those of you who would uh, want to see. But that's essentially what you got. And then at the very end, they show the next victim, or the next purported victim here. We'll uh, come back with more in moments. We take this opportunity to warn those governments who have entered this evil alliance of America against the Islamic State. We'll continue his statement in moments. The beheading certainly appeared to happen at some point because the... Uh, the pictures of the bodies are fairly persuasive, and now it is a, a video of the body. This this latest video, allegedly from ISIS, shows yet another photojournalist, this one an American one, uh, being held at knife point, uh, delivering a statement, making it clear that the murders will continue as retaliation for bombings that are continuing over in Iraq. And then after that... Uh, it shows a few frames of the man in the mask 
uh, the man allegedly jihadi uh, John is what he's being called, uh, that uh, they, they show him striking at the man's throat with the knife a little bit, kind of slicing at it. It fades to black, then fades back in to a pan, video pan of the body this time, not a still frame. But a video pan of the body, or what is alleged to be the body. I have to say, it, it looks persuasive. I mean, it appears that they are, you know, unless they've got a really good Hollywood level set, you know, props master to create a fake head, uh, it lo- sure as hell looks like the guy that was just talking on screen. So they, um, I saw a, an article, a UK article, about who they think this uh, Jihadi John is. Yes. They think it's a rap st- a rap guy that had some level of uh, acclaim. Like he he had an opportunity to be sort of a star underground rapper or whatever. Because you got to consider that there's how many people have left Great Britain. He's got an English accent. Mm-hmm. How many people have left Great Britain to go fight in uh, Syria? The number has to be pretty low, right? I guess. Yeah. You would think. Uh, you would think it would be d- dozens, hundreds of people tops. Uh, they're Likely he's got a passport. You know, he got over there somehow. They have records of whoever it is leaving. Um, you know, so that he fits into an age bracket. They can tell the height of this individual likely by some to some extent. Uh, you know, I mean, you've got people who are going to be able to identify the voice. Right. I mean, so like it shouldn't be that difficult to figure out who it is. The man is alleged to be Abdel Majed Abdel Bari, known as Jihadi John. But obviously they can't prove that. At this time, that's just a suspect. As we continue here, just the last bit of this video from ogrish.tv. That's the only place I could find uh, that had it. Went right there, and it's the first video. I did link to it on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can take a closer look. Give us your thoughts on this. Once again, the video goes to black. It fades to black as the man in the mask begins cutting uh, or what appears to be cutting at the journalist's neck. Stephen Sotloff is the photojournalist in question here. And then it fades uh, fades into black, fades back up for a pan of the body where the head is resting on top of the corpse. And it's actually a video pan. You can see the, the, uh, the clothing he's wearing blowing in the wind. It fades down again and then fades back up for the very final 13 seconds of the video, which I'll play for you now. We take this opportunity to warn those governments who have entered this evil alliance of America against the Islamic State to back off and leave our people alone. They're going to run it. out of uh, people to execute shortly. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you know, that's what that's the play here from these governments. It's like, look, you've got the, you've got these uh, prisoners. You've only had you've had them for however long you've had them. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're dead to us. You're only what they're doing at this point is they're bringing the United States into war. This is one of the reasons that I, I, I mean, like, I feel they're like bringing I'm them into war. They're already at war. They're already bombing. Yeah, but not boots on the ground war. Well, if they put boots on the ground, they're going to be able to get some more victims. Is this more likely or less likely to get Americans uh, wanting to fight a war? I don't know, Mark. That's an excellent question. I'd like to know from you, the audience, what you think about that. How do these videos make you feel? Does it make you feel like, crap, the U.S. government better pull out or more of this stuff's going to happen? Or that they should send the troops in and, you know, bomb and uh, shock and awe all over again? Well, I can tell you that I was outraged um, at when the first video came out. Uh, outraged in what way? Out, I, you know, outraged that these people are doing this. This has to stop is my immediate thought. So I you tend, thought you wanted to support the military to go in there? I tend to uh, lean that way sort of emotionally. Mm. I've been, you know, I was raised Republican and that's, you know, it's it's been the, it's been the solution all along. Now, the problem is, is that this... This has been created by that action up to this point. By the invasion of uh, Iraq right. and Afghanistan. I mean, the sort of halfway war that the United States has fought in the Middle East up to this point. Halfway war? Yeah. When do you say halfway, what do you mean? I mean, they've been demolishing people's lives and properties. And what do you mean halfway war? It doesn't well, feel like a halfway war, I bet you, if you live there. Oh, I'm sure that it doesn't. Uh, but, you know, the United States sa- seems tyrannical with lots of things that it's done over there. But this isn't. If you're fight, they're fighting an idea. They're fighting the idea of the caliphate at this point. And the idea, you can't kill ideas with bombs. Mm-hmm. When you try to, it tends to propagate them. Well, that's what they're doing here, right? If I mean- you want to fight civilians in the Middle East, 
you need to kill the civilians in the Middle East, right? I don't want to fight anybody in the Middle East. I didn't ask you that. I'm asking you a tactical question. If you want to fight civilians in the Middle East, you can't just fight some civilians. You need to f kill the civilians because as you kill civilians, other civilians are going to become progressively more upset, progressively more radicalized. So is that what you mean by it's not a total war, that it's not a total annihilation? It, it would need to be an annihilation as the other side of this. That's the only choices. The only choices are... Get out of so, Iraq. But you're get not out of the Middle East. That, obviously. I'm not. I'm right. saying, you know, look, you're saying some what do you gonna... think you're going to do over there? What do you possibly imagine you're going to do this time? What is the United States military going to do that it couldn't achieve over the course of the last two decades? Nothing. I Nothing. mean, they're just going to go over there, throw away more American lives and more Money. Iraqi lives. Uh, throw away more innocent lives, and uh, and if they do invade with troops, then it's only a matter of time before these guys get their hands on some of them, and then they start executing the troops. They will do that too, right? They're executing journalists at the moment, but that could change. There aren't that there weren't that many a few weeks ago. ISIL ISIS ISIL wasn't that big. Mm -hmm. It's really just kind of blown up with its success of uh, killing American journalists and that well, sort of no, thing. I don't know if that's true. Weren't they taking over cities? In Iraq? Yeah. Uh, you have they, to be pretty big to be able to take over some multiple cities. They when you say they weren't that big, do you mean— Where there were no shots fired. Okay. They weren't that big. I'm telling you they were hundreds strong when I they see. started a few week, weeks ago. Is that before the takeovers of the cities or There were after? some cities where taking over wasn't that difficult. Mm. Okay, so I talked to a guy who's an intelligence analyst over there. Um, his take on it was— Look, I don't know anything but what this guy told me, all right? Sunnis like to fight. Sunnis are good at fighting. Shiites, they don't like to fight. They're not good at fighting. So um, when the Sunnis roll in with some weapons that they've got uh, from whatever location, the U.S., Russia, wherever they manage to get them, then the Shiites drop their weapons and they run away. The, by the way, the very end of this video, they do show the man that will be the next victim, uh, which is what they did in the previous video. They showed Stephen Sotloff at the very end saying, look, you better back off, leave us alone, or we'll kill this guy. And now they're doing the same thing here. The yeah, they man will. that was being protected, his identity was uh, protected by the Daily Mail, apparently at the request of the British government. But his name, according to the video, is David Cawthorn Haynes. He is a British. He sounds British, uh, gentlemen. And according to NBC News, is he, it racist to say somebody sounds British? I don't think so. David Cawthorn Haynes was named as the next target in a video that showed the decapitation, or no, it didn't show that, but it showed the alleged decapitation of Stephen Sotloff. An official with Nonviolent Peace Force, a civilian peacekeeping group, confirmed that the man in the video did security work for them in South Sudan in 2012 and was working for another aid group when he was reportedly abducted in early 2013 in Syria. A fellow he was abducted with was released a couple of months ago, and we were hopeful that he would be released soon, said one of the organizers of that group. She then said that uh, what she heard, when she heard ISIS was threatening to kill Haynes, that my heart went into my throat. So this man appears to be a security agent, not a journalist. We'll continue with more. The they don't care. Numbers. They just want a white That's guy right. to kill. Toll free numbers 855 450 free. Your thoughts are welcome. How does this make you feel? It's Free Talk Live. It's like the James Foley video from a couple of weeks ago where the man who's in capt uh, being held captive by, allegedly by ISIS, is um, he's making a statement to the camera, obviously pre-written statement that he is speaking to the camera. After that, the masked man, who is presumably the same masked man as the previous video, uh, allegedly, he makes a statement and then allegedly begins to cut off the victim's head. The video fades to black after the first few strikes at his throat. Uh, no video, no blood is seen, despite there being multiple pulls made at the man's throat. And then it uh, fades away into black, then fades back in to show a pan of what is ostensibly the body with a head sitting on top. After that, it uh, fades to black again and then fades in to show the next victim. And the the man they're planning on uh, decapitating next is a man named David Cawthorn Haynes. Now, the U.S. or the British government has requested that news agencies refuse to show this uh, to reveal this man's identity, but it has been revealed and so he's next in line. The question you'd asked, Mark, was, are these videos, when people in America, when you uh, watch these videos or are aware of them, whether you watch them or not, if you've been made aware of their content, how do you feel about it? Do you feel like these videos are going to drive people to support more war 
or will they help sicken people to the idea of continuing the war? That's obviously what ISIS supposedly wants. I mean, I don't know if they're controlled by the CIA or what, but they, you know, purportedly their statement is that, hey, stop this, stop the bombing campaign, and we'll stop killing people. And yeah. that's what they want people to get out of this. Mark, you're suggesting maybe the opposite will happen and that this will encourage more people to get in the war spirit and support more bombings of Iraq. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 